Dr. Mireles. Um, he is a music professor actually from St. Mary's University and is also the chair of the music department there. The reason I sort of dedicated my life to music making and teaching people how to make music and teaching people more about listening to music is because it really has a profound way of giving society a creative and expressive value. We desire to create and we desire to express in many different ways and create many different things. Um, for instance, you all uh, had a desire to create this platform of discussion for various topics. As musicians, we like to create experiences for people to listen to our performances and have a profound impact. There's a reason why all cultures have music. There's a reason why all cultures have different music. There's a reason that back in ancient times, people had music on different parts of the world that didn't know each other. Music has become that gift that us as humans have given to each other, platform to create and express, to create anything, to express anything. And I think that's, that's the most beautiful thing about music is that value that it has on society. And it's so profound that it's everywhere in your life. I'm sure you have a, a song for your intro to this, or if you have, um, you know, now we have TikTok, Instagram, those are run by song and music. It's, it's everywhere. It's, it's so big that it's one of those things that you almost don't even know it's there. But it's one of those things where if it was to be taken away or if the music turns off, then it's like, what happened? Something left. And it was the music. That's how grand it's become as part of our daily life. And one of the things that, you know, having studied music as well is that it connects almost like the logical part of the mind and the emotional part of, of things, right? It helps kind of tie those two in. And I think that's one of the, the things that I haven't seen, you know, or at least personally haven't encountered other things that connect both sides uh, of that. Uh, just because, um, like you said, musicians create musical experiences for people to almost, uh, and some musicians have mentioned that it's almost like a transcendence experience, right? You know, is that something that you personally have seen uh, as a musician and also teaching music? Oh, absolutely. Definitely transformative, transcending experiences. So with music always just sort of being there, just like information always being there, but music always being there. If you take the time to slow down and focus on a, on a piece of music, then it can have an even more Trans, then you can have that transformative experience like you were talking about as opposed to just being background noise or background music. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important to go to live concerts or live performances because it gets you in that environment where you can shut everything off and focus on your breathing, focus on your music listening. When you said um, relating it to the logical and the emotional part of your thinking, you know, that that's the subjective versus objective knowledge. And yeah, absolutely. That's, that's where music lives. It sort of intertwines and connects all of those things in a unique way of thinking. You know, there's, there's, there's certain details that you can learn or skills you can learn um, in school, or you can study or read about, you can learn facts or learn certain procedures and then you can make decisions on, okay, this is best for this because of this. But what are those bigger questions that you have? And you all have worked on some of those in your other episodes, but what is, what are those other things that you should be thinking about in your life? You know, for instance, what do you value the most in life? Is this the person I want to marry? Is this a business I want to start? Uh, should I go back to school? Should I pursue a graduate degree? Uh, all of those are different levels of thinking that you can't just find the answer to um, in, a, in a book or looking at data points. 
you know, the, the person that you value the most, the person you love the most and want to spend the rest of your life with, that's, that's a different type of decision making. And that's where music lives. And so if you're experiencing music in a profound way like that, you can train yourself to be stronger in that area of the mind to where you can start thinking more powerfully that way, as opposed to just thinking, uh, I mean, thinking logically is, is, it was, is, positive, obviously, but uh, to go beyond just data points is, is more profound. So I think it's kind of fascinating how a combination of certain sounds can make people actually feel, I mean, you want to talk about transcendence. I mean, it's like the music is just making you feel something. It's changing the way your brain is working and perceiving. Me and Jose tried to start like a rock band kind of thing, and I never realized how hard it is to play in a band. Like it really like you, you look at other people doing like, wow, that looks, yeah, I could do that. But then it's like trying to sync everyone up, trying to sync the drums up with the guitar and with the singing and even that, but also just trying to balance the volume of everything too, especially if you don't have like, you know, the right equipment and all that. It's really hard to, to get the flow going to kind of just all work together. I, guess. I mean, everything you said is, is a real, a real reason why everybody should experience live music. Because there's a lot that goes into it. I just got asked to play in a brass quintet for this church downtown for their Christmas Eve mass. Now, they, they gave me the music. I can practice it, and then I'll play it that day. But, you know, to, to everybody looking on, it looks like I just got the music. I sat down, and I started playing it with everyone. When, in essence, that is what's happening in that moment, because we're not going to rehearse, we're just going to sit down and we're going to sound great because we're professional musicians. But there's so many years of practice and experience and just me sitting in a room, learning my instrument, learning how to be in tune, mastering rhythms, mastering, mastering keys, mastering time signatures, timbre, experience performing with others. There's so much involved that people looking on don't see. So in essence, I am just that day going to drive over there and play and it's going to be beautiful. But there was all of this that happened before it, years of practice to do that. So when you're setting up a band like that, yeah, it's, it's wonderful that you're able to appreciate the amount of effort that goes into that performance or that recording even. Because recordings take a ton of time. So for instance, my solo album, uh, it's an hour long. It's uh, Matthew Morales Prometheus. If you want to check out the uh, my Euphonium solo album, it's an hour's worth of music. But it took me the better part of two years from when I started working on it to when I, it actually released, and lo and lots of hours and hours uh, with many different regards as far as the the recording session, the editing, the mastering, the mixing. Uh, writing the liner notes, the production uh, around it. So, yeah, but it's just like, it's, it's similar to what I do as the chair of music at St. Mary's University.